from chaos comes opportunity. Mm -hmm. There is so much opportunity in the cannabis infused beverage space. It really, we are maybe in the first inning, maybe mm -hmm. bottom of the first inning. And I say about the entire marijuana industry, maybe we're in the third inning, but in cannabis infused beverages, we're at the very beginning. Mm. And I think the opportunity is extraordinary. Hey guys, this is Sid Patel, CEO of Beverage Trade Network and Cannabis Drinks Expo. I'm here live from the Chicago venue at the Cannabis Drinks Expo, third edition of the show. I'm here with Wendy Berger. Wendy is a very inspiring leader. You know, personally, I do look uh, up to her uh, to get some motivation, to get some inspiration, and to see her values and how she's leading. You know, uh, what she's done. So I think uh, this is a great. Uh, you know, touch points I wanted to make on the talk that she did was leading through uncertainty. And just three or four principles that really hit me uh, were, you know, uh, it is supposed to be tough, right? So maybe let's double click on that. Uh, just so the perspective is very clear for a lot of entrepreneurs who had a little, uh, I think I personally think had an easy run. And this is how it's supposed to be. This is what business looks like, you know. We had easy money, we had easy run, we had easy customers coming and paying, you know, so let's let's set, set it from there, Wendy. What are your, uh, what do you think? Well, it, it, it's kind of funny because I think the, when people started in this business, you know, between eight years ago and six years ago, it was like, <laughs> all you have to do is open up and start minting money, right? Mm. Because everybody wants marijuana and everybody's using it. And all you got to do is open up with it. And when times get tough, this is when it really becomes most critical to focus on building a strong foundation, right? Mm. I borrow a lot of metaphors from my real estate business and the strong foundation is what you need. If your foundation is built on this fantasy that business is easy, mm. not a strong foundation. And if we don't build a strong foundation as you build up, mm. you will be weaker, you will sink. And so to me, that foundational knowledge, the foundational skills and the principles on which you build your business uh, provide the strength for going forward and a path through great times and uncertain times. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of brands for sure are struggling, you know, yeah. money's tough and everything. I, I, let's let's give them some inspiration, some value, some tips. Uh, what would you do, Wendy, right? Like, let's say you had this brand, you tried three years, you know, we all tried, like they tried. Uh, just no money in the pocket. Entrepreneurs don't have a salary right now. Uh, you know, they're they're trying uh, to give the checks back to their investors, let's say. Uh, but they still have this dream. You know, they 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 want to. They believe in this. Uh, how would you like if you were in this spot? Like, what? How would you navigate further? You know, what would be the self talk? It's a great question. I think timing really matters. Every day is not the right time to open or start a new business or to build a brand. This may be a time for some people to retrench and wait until some of the chaos is sorted out, right? I mean, if, if the beverage makers in California are all struggling and even the largest brands are struggling, maybe it's not the best time. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't continue learning about the industry, building your foundation, but you may want to say, wait another 18 months until there is a little bit more clarity until the tax situation in California gets worked out. States like California, part of the problem is there are too few dispensaries, mm. right? If there are not enough dispensaries, how can you make a presence? I, I like the statistic of how many dispensaries in a state per 100,000 people. market size, basically. Market size. Understand your market size and really assess it. And we talk a lot about pivoting. If what you're working isn't doing, pivot. But the number one for me is education. Educate yourself, study, read. There's some great what information. What are some practical ways you would pivot? Like I've seen some people doing hemp and D9. Yeah. Any other practical way that you would immediately say, all right, this plan B, let's keep it going. Let's keep the cash flow going. I I'm a big fan of partnerships, Okay. right? So there are opportunities, I think, for brands to come together, brands that are struggling, come together and 
create synergies in your back offices? Why is everybody duplicating every, duplicating the finance function, duplicating, you know, even product development, duplicating the marketing? The distribution can be together, one rep, share the portfolio. And this is a category where we need to rise together, right? We need consumers to have mm -hmm. choices. If a consumer is walking into a dispensary and there's one beverage on the shelf, not a great way to become educated about the category. I think having great competitors with really differentiated product offerings next to each other is key to the advancement of this industry. If I walk into a dispensary and there's six different beverages next to each other, mm -hmm. I'm going to start asking the bud tender questions. How does this one hit me? What's the taste of this one? What's the flavor profile? Mm -hmm. What's the bioavailability? How many milligrams? Right, so having those conversations helps to educate. What's your take on non-alcohol beverages? I've seen a couple of people also yeah. starting that SKU uh, in making sure it becomes a CPG category. So the like moment- Like a de wine? Yeah, yeah, correct. So maybe, maybe it's a play that when Target opens up, maybe then they have a door in. Like, are, there, are you seeing any other plays done by big companies apart from just to keep it going? I, I think the big companies are doing that, right? Oh, many are experimenting with CBD beverages. We haven't seen two, more than one or two of the big companies experimenting with Delta 9 okay. from hemp. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I would be wary of trying to get a beverage into, you know, call it a, a convenience store. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is go and look at the wall of beverages in the mm. convenience store and know that the giants occupy mm. the eye level shelf space down to almost the bottom, mm. getting traction there. I think that's a really difficult path in terms of differentiating. Yeah. I think if you're in, interested in the infused beverage space, there, there's two real opportunities today, D9 from hemp and cannabis infused beverages, right? The traditional THC from marijuana. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, if I look at the, some of the companies I've invested in, in the beverage space, they're doing both. All right. It's expensive, mm -hmm. but they're pivoting to say, okay, all of a sudden Minnesota created this, whether they knew what they were doing or not, they haven't shut it down in a year. Mm. Okay, great opportunities. How many beverage companies have we seen pivot to manufacturing in Minnesota? Mm. Six or eight that I know of, mm -hmm. and there's probably more. I've heard 100 brands are almost there, and yeah. it's becoming like a big popular category and even bottle shops. Yeah, shipping across the country. Wow, yeah. this is like game nice. changing, nice. right? Cool, uh, what's, what's the you know, uh, last thing you would want to tell our folks? I think, and, and you've heard me say this so many times, and I say it for myself and I say it for everyone, from chaos comes opportunity. Mm. There is so much opportunity in the cannabis infused beverage space. It really, we are maybe in the first inning, maybe mm. bottom of the first inning. And I say about the entire marijuana industry, maybe we're in the third inning, but in cannabis infused beverages, we're at the very beginning. Mm. And I think the opportunity is extraordinary. I've never I think been I've, more excited. I've got a word to sum it up. I think we are in a phase of practical optimism. I love that, practical optimism.